let's talk about the risks to investors. And Jay, we'll start with you just from your former SEC position. When you are telling investors what they should be worried about with China, what, what would you start with? Bipartisan support for understanding that reporting, financial reporting, financial controls in China is different from the United States. That's what I would start with, is that this is something that is recognized at every level of government, that when you're dealing with a Chinese company, you're dealing with a different governance and reporting structure. And you know, we, we look at quotes, we look at indices, we look at all of these things, and they look just like you would see from the NASDAQ or from the S&P 500, but the underlying governance and reporting is different, the risks are much different, and investors need to understand that. That's not new. That's something we've known for a long time. And uh, quite frankly, people have been willing to turn a blind eye because they were looking at great growth opportunities. OK, so let's, let's, let's then go, what's happening in Washington now? I think in Washington, we're looking beyond investing. And that committee, Mike Gallagher, you know, Mike Gallagher is not the kind of guy who's just going to have hearings and not try to do something. He's the kind of guy who's trying to try to get things done. And this goes to, what is, what is investing in terms of policy? We, and if you look at ESG, let's, let's just go there. We have decided that somehow through investing, you can do what I would say is public policy. There are limits. So with investing, can we change China? I don't think so. And you know, that's, that's another thing that I think Americans need to understand, American investors. You know, can we change energy policy around the globe with ESG type investing? No. Can we change China with investing? No. We, we need to understand that China has a different approach to the global economy than we do here in the U.S. And let me, let me just go one step deeper. You've had a lot of great guests on today talking about where we are today versus two years ago. The, the theme, whether you're right or left, is the nimble nature of the U.S. private sector has pulled us through what is one of the roughest times you know, in our lifetimes from an economic perspective. We shut everything down. And why are we pretty OK? Like, we're talking about a mild recession or no recession. You completely then object to the idea over the last 30 years that all of the American businesses, whether they be Starbucks or Apple or Goldman Sachs or others, who've gone to China hoping to actually uh, create better relationships that that was a complete, not just, not just failure, uh, but is something that we should not continue, that we should just cut it off? What, do, what, are, you, what are you saying? Not, not at all a failure. Like, did it make sense to raise the middle class in China, the world's you know, lar largest population, and think that by raising um, economic opportunity, you would bring democratization and a lot of the things that we hold dear? Yeah, that was not a mistake. That was actually a good bet. The question is, where are we today? Um, and I think, you know, again, the formation of this select committee. Washington is fractured right now. Everybody agrees this is a good idea. And we need to reassess our relationship with China going forward. You have been sounding this alarm for a long time, Kyle. Um, mm. You feel like people are starting to listen to you now, that the, the winds have changed? Yeah, I mean, look, <clears throat> Jay's points are, are great points. One other thing I would say uh, about on the investing side, you know, when you own a Chinese entity, you actually just own a fantasy football share. You don't have a claim in any of their assets. And you have no way to enforce a claim on these assets. So as a fiduciary, you know, you better think twice about investing in China, given what discount rate do you put on Xi Jinping? What discount rate do you put on no real audits? What discount rate do you put on the fact that if things go south, you have no claim to anything? You know, so I think about how the know your customer rule and how our laws work in the United States and how we should be, the SEC is supposed to protect investors. And I believe they need to go a few steps further. So as I think people what? are starting to listen. You go to, I was in Washington yesterday, uh, and when you're in D.C., this bipartisan support is actually there. And you look at uh, some of the, some of the uh, forced labor uh, bills that have gone through, have had unanimous consent. I think you're starting to see the world wake up to this fact that um, we made a bet on China. Andrew was saying, you know, should we just decouple now? At some point in time, we're going to realize what their real intent is. They don't, they don't adhere or abide by our laws. They, they abide by their own. They uh, are committing genocide in Xinjiang. And every U.S. corporate uh, uh, entity that does business there is very worried about the, all of the forced labor acts that are coming through, and they're trying to work around them. 
But you mentioned Goldman Sachs. You mentioned right. the companies that have businesses in China. If you talk to those companies, have them on TV here, right. ask them how many of their assets they have there. They all have this asset light program so that it's Russia today. If it's China tomorrow, they just turn it off. We were at dinner last night with, with a, a company that does big business in China. But they have four people there. And they said, I think well, some we'll do and some don't.